I'm fascinated with the love story of Frederick Douglass and Anna Murray Douglass. We recently celebrated Valentine's Day, which is a holiday for lovers. And I want you to imagine two black people, young, somewhere in their mid-20s, who have left the countryside and uh, have come to a bustling seaport city where they meet, probably in church, and eventually uh, they date, except back then they probably called it courting, <laughs> and eventually uh, fall in love. Uh, they decide to leave Baltimore for New York City, uh, where they marry, have children, move to places like New York, Massachusetts, and Rochester, New York, uh, Washington, D.C., live happily ever after. Charming story, I don't mean cute. Not exactly. So, the love story begins 200 years ago, when most black people were yet enslaved, at least in the South. And the groom is Frederick Duff. Actually, his name is Frederick Bailey in those days. Um, who would go on to be the most famous black man in the 19th century. He was Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and Barack Obama all rolled into one. Um, he was a prolific writer, an abolitionist, a public speaker, a statesman, a publisher, and a leader of his time. Even though he lived and died before any of us were born, Many people know what Frederick Douglass looked like. In fact, what did he look like? Dark skin, blonde. All right, so I'm kind of getting things like it. Complexion, he was actually not dark skin. He was normal color. He was biracial. And he had this uh, this impressive fro back in the day when people weren't wearing fros. He was a good looking fellow. Um, and even though the technology of photography was just getting off the ground, which I he was born somewhere around 1813, he, over the course of his life, for seven or seven years, he had 163 <coughs> photographic portraits uh, of himself taken. So he is a very recognizable uh, face, uh, and his image is recognized to many today. The bride of the story is Anna Murray. Um, now, Anna Murray was never learned to read and write, but she was a catch. Why? Because she was free. The first person in her family to become free. She was young. She was financially independent. She was in Baltimore all alone by herself. She arrived there at the age of 17, and she worked as a domestic. Very carefully saved her money, and she also was able to keep the money that she earned. And so she had a, uh, for the, that uh, time, she had a, a, a nice life. Now, even though she was, she was a wife, a mother, she became a wife and mother, a homemaker. Um, she was also an abolitionist, even though uh, many people who know Frederick Douglass's name do not know Anna Murray Douglass's name, but she was an abolitionist. She ran uh, their home in Rochester as a safe house on the Underground Railroad, helping countless numbers of black people um, to freedom in Canada. But we don't, unlike her husband, Frederick Douglass, only, we've only been able to find one portrait of Anna Douglass. Um, and that is telling. Um, most people know very little or nothing about Anna Murray Douglass other than um, that she was Frederick Douglass's first wife. Several things make this love story quite extraordinary. Frederick Douglass never knew exactly when he was born because people rarely recorded the births of enslaved people. Uh, 
later on, he adopted February 14th, Valentine's Day, that's his birthday. In fact, part of the reason we celebrate uh, Black History Month, Happy Black History Month, everyone, mm -hmm. and is because of Frederick Douglass's birthday and Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Um, Frederick Bailey was his original name. He was born enslaved, laboring away as a child um, on rural Maryland plantations. Uh, his life changed drastically, though, when he is set to live in Baltimore. He's still enslaved. I'm being, being very intentional in my use of language that I use the term enslaved rather than uh, slave for a number of reasons. Uh, but now he has more freedom. Uh, the wife of his slave holder uh, is a person that he describes as being kindly, and she teaches him the rudiments of reading and writing. He also, for the first time in his life, has access to enough quantities of food. The reading <coughs> and writing lessons come to an abrupt uh, halt when his slaveholder uh, stops it because in some places in the South it is an actual crime teaching an enslaved person to read and write. But Frederick has a deep hunger for learning. He uses the food that he has access to to bribe the little white boys in the neighborhood to, to help him improve his, his uh, reading and writing skills despite his enslaved status. Frederick is ambitious intense desire for learning and also for freedom, but he has no means to achieve it. That would all change when he is an So, um, I'm going to skip that a little bit. Frederick Douglass must have been an exceptional man. You know, he was a good looking fellow, but to catch Anna Marie Douglass's eye being young, free, over 21, yet he somehow won her heart. They weren't able to legally marry because enslaved people were not able to have legal marriages. They jumped the room. That was the ceremony. Um, so Anna Murray Douglas sold a sailor uniform for, she invests her money and uh, gets the material and sold sold a sailor uniform for Frederick. Um, he borrows the free papers of a black sailor. Um, Anna Marie sells some of her belongings um, and liquidates her savings to send Frederick on an ocean voyage to New York, where he becomes a free man. And then sometime later, Anna was able to follow him there, and they were married in the living room of abolitionist David Rose. And um, it's reported that Anna did not go empty-handed. Frederick was empty-handed. She came with a trunk full of things that she bought to, to uh, start their marriage. Um, the pots and pans, dishes, clothing, that sort of thing. Um, they were not out of harm's way. The fugitive slave laws allowed southern slaveholders to recapture um, escapees in the north. Uh, so the family changed their name. First, the their name was Johnson. They changed it from Bailey to Johnson and then Johnson to Douglas with an extra S. Um, and the happily ever after, Frederick worked odd jobs before he became famous as an abolitionist and an anti-slavery crusader. Anna, meanwhile, was holding down the poor, raising the children, caring for her family at a time when there were no labor-saving devices like gas stoves and ovens and washing machines. In fact, she herself offered labor-saving services to other women, white women, uh, working as a washerwoman, a domestic, and eventually a shoemaker, supporting her family with her earnings um, while running a, uh, her home as an underground railroad state house, helping enslaved people find freedom. Um, throughout her 40-year marriage to Fred,
Frederick, he was out on the road, quite frequently, traveling for weeks, months, sometimes years at a time. Anna Murray Douglas often functioned as a single mother. Now, as a dark-skinned, unlettered, 18th century uh, southerner, do you think she was praised for her hard work, intelligence, good looks? Instead, she was ridiculed and scorned. Some people thought that she was not good enough or um, educated enough or pretty enough to be the wife of a well-spoken, well-traveled intellectual like Frederick Douglass. Um, the, the family also lived through tragedies which she, as the mother, undoubtedly had to shoulder the death of a child, marital, marital difficulties, a devastating fire that was probably an arson that destroyed their home in Rochester and all their belongings. And then after we went to Washington, D.C., and suffered a series of strokes and passed away. Frederick would go on to, not, to remarry and not with his wife, Frederick Julius. So that we know of 18th century heroines like Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth, but they were exceptions to the rule. Most women in those times were not public figures. Their lives were often limited to the domestic sphere of home and family. Anna Murray Douglas may have been silent, if not outright silence, but her hidden works were invaluable. Were it not for Anna Murray, Frederick Douglass may not have been free or going on to become the powerful voice that he became. The world we live in now may have looked very different indeed. But not only that, Anna's work on the Underground Railroad was enormously difficult and sometimes dangerous. Um, despite the difficulties in the last years of their marriage, Frederick Douglass was a federal woman. He was a suffragist and he was also a feminist who fought, fought for the right for women to vote. Black men, <coughs> theoretically anyway, had the right to vote before even white women. About the rights of women, Frederick Douglass said, we hold women to be justly entitled to all we claim for men. We go farther and express our conviction that all political rights, which it is expedient for man to exercise, it is equally so for women. So um, I'll just leave with one last thought. The reason that I didn't use words like slave, master, and illiterate is because of the political and quite frankly, racist connotation of those words. Um, I prefer to say that our people were in captivity or were enslaved. That's a condition. That was, slavery was not their identity. Um, they were not owned. If, if you read some of the secular rhymes and spirituals, um, enslaved people were very clear about the fact that the only master we do not call them slave owners. Um, they were slave owners. And then there are many types of literacy. Literacy is the ability to master a skill or a discipline. Reading and writing is just one part of that, or one version of literacy. I, for example, don't read music, but I would not consider myself illiterate, so I don't use that term. I would prefer to say unlettered. Um, and that is what I have to say about, uh, I'm particularly proud to talk about Anna Murray Douglas, a woman who is an unsung heroine of our history, and happy Black History Month, one and all. Yeah.